to share whatever uh, we have with as many people as we can. from Yerushalayim. As the entire nation is actively involved in preparing for Pesach, I deem it appropriate to study together with you two consecutive verses in the 13th chapter of the book of Exodus. The first pasuk reads, Shiv'at yamim tochal matzot. You shall eat matzot for a seven-day period. And immediately following that, we read, Matzot ye'achel. Eight Shabbat Hayamim. Matzot shall be eaten for the seven day period. But what's the difference between Tochal Matzot and Matzot Yeachel? For those studying the structure of Hebrew grammar, the conjugations of Hebrew verbs, Yeachel is the Nif'al form. Matzot shall be eaten. The one closest to my heart is the teaching of a certain Hasidic rabbi who wrote that the first sentence is there to teach us to eat matzot. But that's not enough. Make deliberate attempts to see to it that matzot will be eaten by others as well. If there's someone you know who unfortunately cannot afford matzot, are you seeing to it that matzot yeachel? Are you seeing to it that matzot shall be eaten in their home? In their family? Have we really searched to find the identities of those who cannot afford the costs of the holiday foods and celebrations? Are we satisfied that we and our families are eating matzot? Shavat yamim tochal matzot? Or does it really hurt us to know that matzot lo yeachel, that many are not yet celebrating because of financial stress? The very first law in the Ramah, in the Code of Jewish Law, in the laws of Pesach, is the law mentioning the blessed practice of sharing and distributing matzah wheat, matzot, and Pesach products to the destitute and to the poor. Furthermore, matzot yachel, matzot shall be eaten, charges us with the mission to spread the light and radiance of Pesach so that our entire nation will be spiritually connected. If we know someone who doesn't understand the significance of the Seder, do we take the extra step to interest them in Pesach? Or are we complacently satisfied if we ourselves observe and celebrate? Our great teacher, Maimonides, writes in his code, Rambam, Hilchot Yom Tov, Perek Vav, Halacha Yud Het. And while one eats and drinks for oneself on the holiday, it is the duty to feed the stranger the convert, the orphan, the widow, for someone who locks the doors to their courtyard and eats and drinks with their spouses and families without giving anything to those who are in need, to the poor and to the bitter in the soul. Their meal, says Rambam, is not a rejoicing in a divine commandment, but a rejoicing of one's own stomach. Rejoicing of this kind, says Rambam, is a disgrace. Call dichfin, Let all who are hungry come and eat. Call ditzrich, Let all who are in need come and observe Pesach. Tochal matzot, without matzot yeachel, is an incomplete form of holiday observance. There is some question as to how really meaningful it is to invite the poor and the needy as we are already comfortably sitting at our Seder table? Perhaps this is not the real invitation. Perhaps this is just a restatement of what was said in the communities. And we put it into the Haggadah to remind everyone. Maybe they really did go out and announce. That's perhaps why it's in Aramaic. It's not in Hebrew. Maybe that was the spoken language. Maybe there were poor people standing outside. And indeed, they went over to the windows or to the doors and they said, Kol dechfin! Anyone hungry? Anyone in need? Come in and join! I once heard of a certain chassid from a certain community who prided himself in the fact that he was the only one who ever celebrated the Seder with the Rebbe. But how did he accomplish that? The Rebbe never allowed students to be there, only his family. This clever student stood outside 
And when the Rebbe said, Kol dichfin yetevi yechul. Kol ditzrich yetevi yifsach. He knocked on the door. He said, Rebbe, I'm hungry. Rebbe, I need Pesach. What's he going to say? No? Why the double expression? Kol dichfin yetevi yechul. Kol ditzrich yetevi yifsach. Maybe there are at least two types of needy guests. There are people who are physically hungry. Invite them in to eat. But maybe there are those who have plenty of food. They're not hungry. They're kol ditzrich. They are in need of a Pesach celebration. Invite them in as well. Attract and connect to both groups. Rav Yaakov Emdin, in his commentary to the Haggadah, quoting even earlier sources, seems to learn that the double invitation, all who are hungry, all who are in need, called Dichvin, called Ditzrich, he says that this comes to include in the invitation not only the Jewish people, but the non-Jews as well. Let everyone come in. Let everyone join. The Zohar speaks of how God is, so to speak, ever so sensitive to how we treat the people who are, in the language of the Zohar, the broken vessels. On holidays, there is a special feeling, a special caring we have to show to these broken vessels. We will try to sing, to dance, and to dine with them, for we know that that's the essence of Matzot Ye Achel. May no one have to be ever alone in any celebration, but surely not on Pesach. And may we all join together in the united celebration of Pesach, right here in Yerushalayim, with at least 14 million brothers and sisters, as well as all the others of the world who want to join. And we hope that this united celebration will be the highest celebration in world history. Chag Sameach, Leitraot Yerushalayim. two ways to look at this world, more than two ways, but there are two, two approaches. We can look at that which is there, and we can look at that which is lacking. Our Torah attitude, uh, the one that uh, we try to espouse, has something to do with looking at the accomplishments of people, not at that which is lacking. Maybe when we examine our own uh, actions, maybe we should look at that which is missing. So I think we should focus on the fact that, wow, they were at the Seder. They ate matzah. They celebrated the night of the Seder. The mitzvah of eating matzah is specifically on the first evening of the holiday. If someone wants to avoid any kind of wheat products, they don't have to eat matzah the whole week. Uh, the fact that you're saying that maybe this person will after the Seder go and eat bread, I hope that uh, they'll be the right kind of Seder and they'll be so spiritually elevated that even if they were considering doing that, they'll change their mind radically right after they celebrate the Seder of Wolseldorf.